Good afternoon. Alzheimer's disease is a thief. It comes and it steals away the most precious memories that people identify themselves with. It is indeed a very clever thief because people who are affected don't even remember what they have lost. They just feel lost in time and space. Alzheimer's disease can affect anybody. Intellectuals, professors, artists, musicians, handyman people, anybody. I started uh, to do research on early diagnosis and treatment of Alzheimer's when my mother developed it. Um, in fact, Alzheimer's run in my family, and most probably I carry the genes too. I'm not sure, but most probably I do. That means that my chance in order to get uh, my chance for getting Alzheimer's is about four times higher than those people without a family history. Does it worry me? Of course it does. I'm over half a century old, and every time that I forget the deadline of assignments that I've given to my students, I worry that I may have Alzheimer's and the students can get away with their assignments. <laughs> but uh, despite of, of my genes, uh, I am determined not to develop Alzheimer's. And today I'm going to share with you um, five brain rules that I think it would help to age with a healthy brain, and I do follow them faithfully. There are some uh, facts about Alzheimer's and brain, let me talk about them. The picture on the right shows the very first patient who was diagnosed by Dr. Louis, Alois Alzheimer's, and hence the name of Alzheimer's disease. And the picture on the left shows Sister Anne, who is uh, celebrating her 90th birthday, and she uh, didn't have any cognitive decline. So it makes us wonder, what makes the difference that somebody um, quite young at age 40 develops Alzheimer and some other people live up to 100 without uh, absolutely no cognitive decline? There are some facts about the brain. We know that imaging studies have shown that the volume of the gray matter, which includes our neurons, start uh, to decline after age 25 that early. On the other hand, the white matter, uh, which is the connection between the neurons, synapses, they grow until uh, age mid-40s. But even that, too, starts to decrease after age 50 or so. So it seems that the general trend is to um, lose our brain volume as we age. However, neuroscience studies, especially in the last 20 years or so, have provided some hope and proof that our brain is indeed plastic. It can change either way. It can shrink, lose, or it can expand and gain. Of course, the younger the brain, the more plasticity it has. But neuroscience studies have provided proof that neurogenesis, which means growing new neurons, is a possibility even at old ages. In fact, there has been a research, um, recent research published in 2014 that says that on average, across all ages, we do renew our neurons by 2.7%. I'm not sure about you, but every time that I remember this study, I feel 2.7% younger. <laughs> so the question would be, is, uh, can we control neurogenesis? And luckily, the answer is yes. And then the next question would be, how to improve neurogenesis? It's important to remember that Alzheimer's is not a single disease with a single cause, with a single effect. It is a multifold condition, and therefore, uh, the approach to age healthy with a brain healthy um, should be a multidisciplinary approach. Here are some rules that I have summarized in as five rules. And as I said, I do follow them faithfully. And perhaps these rules sound quite common sense to you. In fact, they are common sense. But I hope I can convince you why they are so important and how we can follow them. Rule number one, eat healthy, but more importantly, enjoy your meal. What is a healthy diet? 
uh, nutritional studies can be quite controversial because there are so many confounding variables. You may think that we may want to look at the Alzheimer's rate in different countries and use that as a guideline to come up with a healthy diet. Well, people have done that. If you search on, in, on the internet, you can find a table of all stats in different countries. And um, you will be perhaps surprised to see that the Alzheimer rate is the lowest in the countries in the war zone. Why is that so? Well, I guess because of two obvious reasons. Number one, those people are dealing with the life and death on a daily basis. They don't have to, uh, time to di diagnose Alzheimer's. And number two, uh, they don't get... Uh, they don't live enough to have a chance to develop Alzheimer's. There is yet another country with a very low um, Alzheimer's rate, and that is India. But again, the same argument applies there because the life expectancy in India is 20 years lesser than that in Canada. Nevertheless, some researchers have used that and say that the reason the rate of Alzheimer's in India is low is because of the excessive use of turmeric. You may want to wish add turmeric to your diet too. It is, in fact, it, it has a lot of health benefit, but uh, be careful because too much turmeric could be hard on liver. Anyways, we should be um, comparing countries with the same life expectancy. For example, Japan, Australia, Canada, and US. Japan and Australia have significantly lower rate of Alzheimer's compared to Canada and US. And when you look at their diet, perhaps the general observation that you may have, you may get, is that Japanese and Australians eat a lot more fish than us, and also they have a lot, uh, much uh, lesser per, um, pesticides in their crops. Overall, the consensus of all nutritional studies is that to age with a healthy brain, we should consume more fish, berries, grain, um, nuts, and vegetable. And the recommended diet is a low-carb Mediterranean diet. By low-carb, it is pretty low. It is, it, it is recommended carb minus uh, fiber, the net carb, should be kept below 100 gram. It's better to be kept around 50 to 60, and also have a moderate uh, level of the protein and uh, fat. Fat like coconut oil, some people say it has miraculous effect on Alzheimer's, but again, be careful not to be too hard on your liver, and olive oil, and etc. The key is that a very low carb. It's so easy to increase the carb um, by just eating some desserts. In fact, I suggest you take, you count the number of uh, grams of your carb intake, subtracting the fibers, and see how easy you can have up to 200 or 300 gram per day. If you're not diabetic, another suggestion, recommendation uh, they have made is that to skip the snack between the two meals so that your body use get used to burn fat in order to produce energy. Nevertheless, you have to learn about your body and it needs a little bit more because everybody's metabolism could be different. Why do I emphasize so much on uh, diet and carbohydrate? Is because we need to know a little bit about brain as well. But our brain weighs only about three pounds, which is about less than one and a half percent of our body weight. However, it uses 20 to 25 percent of the total energy that our body requires. And it doesn't store energy. So like a child, it keeps asking for food all the time. And if you tra don't train it, it keeps asking for sugar as the main source for the fuel of the brain. That's why that when you study, you feel hungry all the time, and you would crave for the sweet things. But studies show that sugar is indeed like a white poison for the brain. Don't forget, carbohydrates also easily are being converted to sugar again. So again, it is so easy to reach a very high amount of carbohydrate and sugar for the brain. And also, don't be deceived by some people that say that natural sugar is OK and harmless. No, it doesn't matter if it is natural or um, chemical. Too much sugar is like a poison for the brain. 
So in order to have a low-carb diet, basically, unfortunately, you got to give up all these desserts, delicious desserts. If you have difficulty to do that, and if you are a type of person like my husband who gets panic attack every time that we run out of ice cream and biscuits at home, well, I suggest the method that I call it fast and feast. Train your brain like a child. Um, make yourself to uh, eat healthy and do exercise six days a week, but promise yourself that you will have one cheat day. Okay? On your cheat day, eat whatever you wish. Any delicious dessert that you wish. After all, remember I said you got to eat healthy, but you have to enjoy your meal too. If eating healthy is going to add stress to your life, forget about it. It doesn't work that. And also, I said there is another way, uh, another source of fuel for the brain, too. Um, another source of fuel for the brain are ketones. Ketones are a group of metabolites that are synthesized from fatty acid in the liver. They are not present in the food. We can't get them from the food. But we can train our body to produce ketones. In fact, ketones are being produced in the liver whenever we do burn fat. And that brings us to the uh, next rule, rule number two, which is physical exercise. It is recommended that you should keep your heart rate about one and a half to twice than your resting heart rate for 20 minutes per day on a daily basis. And aerobic is, um, exercises, even only twice a week, has shown that decreases the risk of Alzheimer's by 60%. If you want to improve your thinking and your memory, studies have shown that you have to keep moving. So my suggestion is go to a dancing club, register it, and be active, keep moving. Every time that you are standing in a, a line to get some sandwich or anything in the airport in particular, keep moving. And you know what? One of the beauty of getting old is that we don't care if people laugh at us anymore. <laughs> and you don't have to go to gym in order to study. You can follow just some baby's moves, like the baby in the left, just do that position and see how many seconds you can hold that position. I bet the heart rate goes up quite quickly. <laughs> Rule number three, take your mind to the gym too. And remember that brain is plastic. If you don't use it, you will lose it. So the phrase of use it or lose it applies to the brain too. And the key point in taking the mind to the gym is you have to keep it dynamic. If you are master in playing, let's say, a piano, start learning a new language or start learning a new instrument. Um, if you are master in playing um, cross puzzles, start doing Sudoku. Doesn't matter what. Make your brain to be challenged all the time to, and keep a dynamic pace. My own studies have shown that as we age, our spatial cognition, or in other words, orientation capability, deteriorates. So work on your spatial condition, cognition. Let me ask you, do you use GPS when you drive around the city? If you do, my suggestion is make sure that you throw it away. <laughs> if not, OK. Uh, hide it in a corner of your cart so that you cannot uh, find it easily. And instead of GPS, use a map and every time try to reorient yourself according to the map. This way you ensure that you're not losing your hippocampus volume due to the using GPS all the time. Also, strength, um, strengthen your associative memory, which is like associating a name with a face. There are tons of exercises online, including my team's design exercises online that you can access for free. So keep working and challenging your, your mind um, by some exercises. Rule number four is sleep well. 
A sleep deprivation can kill us. You can't sleep well because your partner snores. If that is the case, there is an easy solution for it. Just sleep in separate rooms. As simple as that. We need a sleep in order to remove the toxics from the brain. And sleep before learning, especially for students in the audience, is quite critical for memory formation. And it refreshes our emotional brain. It is not for nothing that they say, whenever you have an important decision to make, sleep on it. So that it refreshes your emotional part of your brain and you can think more rationally. Sleep after learning is quite critical too uh, for memory consolidation. In fact, I think it is good if we allow our students to have 10 minutes nap between two lectures. You may suggest it to the university administration and you can quote me on that. Okay, but wait a second. Can't you sleep because you are stressed? That is quite important and takes us to the last but not the least, and in fact, to the most important rule of the brain. That is to control your stress. Of course, it is much easier to be said than done. A stress is number one killer. It impairs memory. It weakens uh, the links between the neurons. It uh, acts like a cholesterol on the blood vessels. But you may ask how to control our stress. <clears throat> I think the best treatment for stress, anxiety, depression, is an intense exercise. With every drop of sweat, you will lose some pieces of your stress. And after a month, you will see some remarkable results in fact. Despite all the sad news around the world, I strongly believe that happiness is a choice that we make at every moment of our lives. We as humans, we are social creatures and we need each other to survive. So don't stay alone and try to be engaged and be social. In summary, the key to age with a healthy brain is the choice of lifestyle. It is not up to our genes. It is up to us to make that choice. And I choose to eat healthy, to exercise, to be social and active. And I choose to be happy to in, uh, in order to enjoy my life and also not to forget the deadline of my student's assignment. <laughs> Thank you.